This is the Football Podcast with your hosts, Tyler, Andy, and Boyer. Welcome back to Manasy Football Podcast presented by your performance enhancing dads. What's happening, fellas? What up? This is what's up right here. Champ, baby. This is nice to have the champ as the host of the podcast. There's not going to be an ego in these podcasts at all. We promise. It's never happened before. (laughs) And also for any newbies listening says that I'm good at this thing once in a blue moon. And here it is. Boyer so also has a couple of trophies over there. Than I do, so that's something. Boyer's got his toilet showing and then, uh, you know, a, a dynasty trophy. So, I mean, we we do something around here, so. But, uh, granted, that dynasty trophy was bought by you, and it is immaculate. It's great. Yeah. Put in the comments if you guys want me to show it on the next video. I'll I'll, I'll pop it up. and. I want you it. to show it on the next video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, let's say, uh, hey, uh, hit up our uh, OnlyFans in the link in the <laughs> comments there. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's podcast. We're going to run through week one uh, breakdown. Um, we're going to go through star sets decisions for week one. Who's going to win? Uh, we're going to hit a little of a, what are you drinking? Dad jokes. And we're going to hit the draft recap and then do a little over under. So we got a lot coming at you. So let's hit it. Um, Andy, you want to jump us into uh, me versus Chris to start? Why do you always get to go first, Ty? That seems unfair. That's how my Yahoo has it set up, so sucks to suck. Mm, I guess that's fair. All right, Ty versus Chris. Um, Ty has two at quarterback, Dotson and London at wide receiver, Chubb and McCaffrey uh, at running back, Fairmuth at tight end, Cam Akers in the flex, Harrison Butker, Buffalo defense. Um, on the bench, I don't think you're playing Dan Jones over Tua. Ford's a handcuff, Nico, Burks, Tony, Kmet. Um, I would like to posit that you should play Kadarius Tony over Johan Dotson. I don't think that the uh, Washington football team is going to be doing much passing against the Arizona football team. And I think that the Chiefs Lions game is going to be quite competitive with Kelsey potentially, likely, maybe not playing. Um, I like Kadarius Tony in that spot. So I'm calling my shot. I don't think that you're going to make that switch. I know you're high on Dotson. I think in general, Dotson's the right play. But this particular week, especially given the status of Travis Kelsey, I'm going to say Tony belongs in your starting lineup and I would take out Dotson over London for thoughts playing just a little bit of devil's advocate is that the uh, quarterback for Arizona uh, Joshua Dobbs I think Uh, not a ton of tape on him it's very possible that Arizona can move the ball decently well due to lack of tape and understanding of the quarterback like we could see a decent game here in week one and then Arizona just absolutely get blown out for the rest of the, the time if he doesn't throw 18 interceptions in the first quarter. Did you see the clip from practice the other day? <laughs> yeah, where, where he hit the where back. Where it took of him two minutes and... to snap the hit, ball. Technically, he hit the numbers. Like he hit the numbers of the player like back. Yeah, he hit the defender <laughs> in the helmet, I think, was, was closer to what happened. And that so, was after the edge rusher blew right past him because it's practice you can't blow up your own quarterback but he definitely got sacked very early on that play too also to be fair in practice we don't know what it is that they're practicing at the time we don't know not what winning they're trying to look <laughs> we're trying we don't know all those things all i'm saying is that whenever there's a quarterback like this everybody kind of says oh week one you know it's over but then it's still a competitive game because there's no tape on that quarterback so I'm fine playing your studs and Dotson is a stud in comparison to Tony. I don't want Ty to think that he's got, you know, the greatest wide receiver group of all time right now, but that that's my devil's advocate. It could be a competitive enough game. Dotson is a touchdown machine. One touchdown is all he needs. No guarantee for Tony on that by any means. So I'm okay playing Dotson here. 
uh week one just because we don't we don't know like it's it's easier to make this call if this was week four right but week one play your studs and just get what points you can so i had had i don't expect you to make the change ty i'm just make i'm staking my claim I, I I had to debate on actually starting uh, Tony over London, uh, with with Terry McLaurin out. I I think Dotson gets a touchdown week one seventy yards. Is McLaurin out? I heard he was uh, hoping to play. I'm looking up. I the problem is his turf toe is going to linger and and yeah, whether he plays, he's, I think he's going to be limited. I think there's going to be and and like you're saying, if they don't have to pass the ball much and they don't need McLaurin because they're winning. They give Dotson seven targets, six catches, 70 yards, and a touchdown, and McLaurin can go sit down and they just run the ball the rest of the game. Uh, McLaurin was limited at practice, which is um, – That's promising. Like it's good. On, on a Wednesday, you want to see him limited and see where they go on Thursday, Friday. I do think that that could actually absolutely make or break the decision, though. All right, we're beating a dead horse at this point. I don't expect you to make the switch. I'm saying Tony does better than Dotson this week, and if it were my team, I would – I would make that change, but I acknowledge that that's not a common opinion. Um, yeah. Let's look at Chris's team. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Tyree Kill, Mike Williams, uh, Gibbs and Mostert at running back, rookie Luke Musgrave at tight end, James Cook in the flex, Carlson and Pittsburgh defense. Um, he's got Jamal Williams on the bench here. Um, I don't know if I put him in, but uh, we'll talk about this later. Like he kept him to play him in week one, two, and three while Kamara's out, right? So it kind of is a a bummer to have used up some of that draft capital keeper spot on a guy that you're not going to use in this exact situation that you kind of expected to use him. So what are you going to do? Um, Pickens or Mike Williams this week? Mike Williams against Miami. Yeah, I, I don't I, think I, I like Pickens. Pickens against the Niners, but in general, I I do like Pickens this year. Yes. Uh, w- Williams in a shootout with Miami, I think, is going to get points. Yep, I feel that. Um, Lawrence against Indy or Richardson in the same game against Jacksonville. I'm not yeah. rolling the rookie in week one. I like Trevor Lawrence quite a bit this year anyways. So yeah. so my my one suggestion would is going to be an unpopular opinion as well, probably. I might start Jamal Williams over James Cook. I'm not against that. The um, Jets have a halfway decent defense. I don't like uh, – personally, I just don't like James Cook that much. I mean, he'll be fine for the year, but I think that Singletary is going to take some of the – or uh, not Singletary. Harris. Um, Damian Harris is going to take some of the work. James Cook is going to get some of the work. But the, Josh Allen's going to take goal line work. They're going to pass the ball. I don't know. I think I'm going to take the more sure thing and and what Jamal Williams should be week one over James Cook. Yeah, I think that the Saints is are going to like lean on the veteran more than the rookie uh, Kendra Miller. Uh, Miller, yeah, especially week one. week one. Miller's been hurt, right? So I, I think that that would make sense, Ty. I, I'm on board with that, especially since we don't like. There's so much hype around James Cook. But you have this decision where you don't have to buy into the hype week one. You can see what happens. And you know that Josh Allen in the passing game is going to cook. So no pun intended. Uh, So I would say bench cook, see what happens, put in Jamal Williams with the expectation that the veteran is going to get the touches or at least the important touches, right? And that's what we're looking at. The goal line touches the fourth quarter touches whatever it is um so i agree with ty actually on this i I think i would put in jamal at flex and see what happens with james cook it could be three or four weeks before we really understand where what his role is anyway i can get behind that i think it's it's close enough that i wouldn't fight you guys on it so um I think Charbonnet is wildly overprojected by Yahoo. He's projected for like nine and a half points this week. I'm definitely not putting him in over Mostert or Cook slash Williams. Be like well over twenty points by the Seahawks running backs by that. Yeah, I, I think Yahoo's know. projections are need some sorting out uh, at this Against point. Aaron so. Donald. Whew. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, just a heads up. Uh, we're probably going to be spending some extra time on these as we digest who's on whose team in Week One. Um, 
but I think we can get to making our picks. Uh, who do you guys have in this one? Boyer. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take me. Uh, just I, I. I'm hoping for the best this week. I think Chris has enough question marks going down his lineup here that that I think I can take this one. I worry about the Pitt San Fran game. Uh, I think both those defenses are solid and can limit Ty's McCaffrey Firemuth combo. Um, but I think uh, Tags is going to be in a shootout. Um, Chris has Hill, so that takes away some of that. Right. I think uh, McCaffrey is still McCaffrey. So even, I mean, the chances that he scores is still pretty high even against a good defense uh drake london against carolina like that's kind of one of those like they those get into shootouts even when they both stink and they both stink so i I think i'm gonna lean towards ty because he's got the floor with those running backs um and and i see the ceiling as well uh I, i definitely see a path here for chris by i mean this could be a close game i think i think this might be Maybe the game of the week, but I'm gonna go with not in a good way. Not in a good way, but but I do think it'll be like a 101 to 100 like type of like just right there in the middle somewhere, you know? Yeah, I 93 to 91 and a half. If that more that I think if if tags can you know stay out of concussion protocol, Ty's gonna look real good on this one. (laughs) <laughs> I think I've got Ty in this one. I'm I'm not saying I don't, but um, I think that Chris has a window here, depending on how much uh, Jameer Gibbs is able to do tomorrow night. Um, you know, the, they've they've question. talked him up all preseason. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna be our deep threat. We're gonna use him in all sorts of packages. Jameer Gibbs this. Jameer Gibbs that. Everything, everything, everything. And then just yesterday, the quote from the coach was, "Well, we're gonna ease him into it tomorrow night." And it's and, like okay like you know i don't know what's gonna happen you you never know with rookies in the first week damian pierce i don't think touched the ball in week one last year it was all rex burkhead so right coaches fuck around and week one is always weird but gibbs gibbs is a talented guy and detroit really wants to use him in a lot of ways from what we've been told and what we've seen coming out of camp so if he pops off in his first career game against a team that they're gonna have to score a lot to keep up with that's Chris's window to get in this matchup. Yeah, and to be fair, Montgomery is a Campbell guy. Just a pound it, roll it in, just get all the volume, and he may just end up doing that to try and limit the amount of time Mahomes has on the ball and those type of things. I could see Gibbs being the linchpin here. I agree with you, Andy. All right. All three of us pick Ty. Yep. Boyer, jump us into Jeremy versus Fryer. Jeremy and Fryer. Sorry, I have to actually find these guys because they're not, you know, like in order for me. But uh, all right. Uh, Jeremy's got uh, Justin Herbert at quarterback. He's got uh, the Sun God at wide receiver. Uh, Diggs, Henry, Dobbins, Waller, Lockett. He's got a kicker and a defense. I know we like to say that, but Myers and Washington is, or Washington specifically might end up being very good. I know I said we don't know for sure, but very well could be top scoring defense. Um, so I don't want to look over that. Um, on the bench, uh, Javante Williams for Denver, which is a great bench play. Uh, Sky Moore, A-Chain, Michael Thomas, Spears, which is just a handcuff, and Van Jefferson, which could be very interesting if Cup doesn't play. Um, looking at his team, though, like he has almost too many. They're older, but he has name brand players. Like he's he's definitely got the Kellogg's to the to the store <laughs> brand of cereal here. Um, so I don't think that you're benching almost any of these guys. Even Tyler Lockett, we know, can produce in in bunches. And I know Tyler doesn't appreciate that, but he can produce in bunches, absolutely. And in, in all honesty, he has enough of a floor with Henry and Diggs and uh, the Sun God and Justin Herbert that he can play a 
big upside guy like this in week one. And if he gets three points, then, you know, he's got plenty of other players right now. Week one, they're fresh, regardless of their age, that I think that you probably just stick with what you got. Yeah, Thoughts? I agree with that. I don't um I'd love to get Javante in here, but I think um in week one, him coming off the injury, he's looked fine in camp and in uh the preseason games that he's got. I think he had like five targets in the preseason game he played in. So like doesn't seem to be any issues any issues with the injury for Javante, but they've got Samaji P. Ryan. I kind of expect them to ease into things as far as he's concerned. So um, leaving him on the bench when you've got a guy like Lockett, um, who I think I saw the other day is the only, the only player with nine receiving touchdowns in each of the last five years. So, I mean, keep that in your lineup. Jeremy's got a bunch of guys. I think he's got a solid advantage here and it, you would hate to give back points because you got cute and started a guy like Javante who goes out and gets 10 touches for 35 yards in his, first game back off a major injury yeah so um jeremy drafted a 2020 2021 all-star team here like from years ago and i think week one it'll be great i like the upside he put on his bench for if that team starts to falter later on but i don't think early in the season that's going to happen and it's kind of one of those things that's like, don't mess with a good thing. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's looking good. They're going to get volume and touches like they have in the past. Like he's, he's kind of in a time machine right now. And I, I don't think you mess with that early in the season. Yep. I agree with everything you guys have said. Um, the only argument I could have is kind of the same thing Andy said with getting a chief's wide receiver in there, Sky Moore. But I'm not putting him on over Lockett. Lockett's a, a sure thing as much as I hate Lockett. So I'm I'm leaving his lineup as is and see what happens. But he's got great depth. That I, I, will, I will say is that uh, Lockett and Sky Moore probably have very similar floors and very similar ceilings. Might as well go with the the guy who has you know popped off and done crazy things in the past, right? Like right. might as well. But yep. all right, let's uh, jump over right. to Matt. Let's jump yep. over to Fryer. Fryer's got. Uh, Lamar, he's got Lamb and Addison currently at wide receiver. He's got uh, Kenneth Walker, who was essentially a great keeper. Uh, Jerry McKinnon at RB2. Andrews at tight end. Stevenson at uh, the flex. He's got a kicker in the Philly defense against New England, which, again, that could actually be a pretty good matchup for him. Um, on the bench... Uh, Lazard, uh, Zay Flowers against Houston, Kamara, who suspended Jared Goff, uh, Kendra Miller, questionable, and Sean Tucker. Um, I think the only question I have here as far as who you might fit in, I, I don't like Lazard at all. I like this. I honestly thought that was a silly pick. He wasn't, didn't do much in Green Bay. So Zay Flowers is probably the only one that I would consider trying to get in over Addison but like I mean we, we saw what Thielen could do in that offense they pass a ton we don't really know what the Ravens are gonna do going forward and you don't want to stack Lamar and a wide receiver he doesn't throw to so I'm okay with Addison here at wide receiver too what are your guys thoughts I think if you're trying to get somebody in the lineup, you're bumping Stevenson to RB2 and dropping McKinnon over Addison in week one. I I don't feel great about a Jackson Andrews Flowers stack. Um, but a big sack like that could be a, you know, hope to just see them go off on the Houston Texans and hope that that's what gets you back into it. I don't know. I know Jarek McKinnon had like nine receiving touchdowns last year. So if you're hoping for that, fine. But of Bateman, Beckham and Flowers, I think Flowers is probably the best receiver there. Maybe not in week one of the season of his rookie season, but you know, you drafted him for a reason. Friars, 
uh, Fryer didn't do himself any favors by clogging up his bench with a guy that's suspended and a Jared Goff who he doesn't need until a bye week. Like I like Jared Goff just fine this year, but you've got Lamar Jackson until he's hurt. You don't need to worry about having a backup uh, quarterback. So like looking at week one while he's short on running back or at flex because, uh, because Kamara is out, he doesn't have a lot of options because he clogged up his bench with junk for the first couple of weeks that he doesn't really it's not doing anything for him. So that's a bummer. I think that was a poor choice. Um, but I, I do think that looking at Jeremy's team, who I'm going to pick to win, if we want to jump ahead to that, because he's got way more talent. And despite their age, it's week one, they're all healthy. I'm very comfortable picking Jeremy to have a, a better week than Fryer here. I think that putting flowers in and making sure that, you've got a stack with Jackson and Andrews and Jackson and flowers so that whatever big plays he's getting, you're getting twice is the, is the way to get back into this matchup. So drop McKinnon, move Stevenson up, put flowers at the flex. I don't think I'm triple stacking Baltimore. Jeremy has Dobbins. The whole Baltimore offense is covered in this game. I, I think I'm going to, take the shot on Co- McKinnon and hope he gets a touchdown because I don't know that Zay Flowers is going to do that. If if we're talking teams that might blow him out and just run the ball because Houston's not good, Baltimore could do that. Um, So I... I, I mean, if I Baltimore does that, Jeremy's winning either way, right? Right. So I think I'm taking the shot on not triple stacking Baltimore this week. So, but anyway... Either way, uh, Andy, I think you hit on a pitfall that's not hit on very much by the media, by podcast, by whatever. I feel like a lot of times in drafts, um, you're setting we me focus up for on a the, the, <laughs> we focus on like the overall season, right? And we don't focus on those first few weeks that can kind of make or break this season. If you go 0 and 3, 0 and 4, especially in a keeper league where there's your potential to sell or move on, um, then your season's kind of shot unless you just believe in your team. So the way that the team was built here for Fryer was built for after those first few weeks. If he goes 0 and 3, 0 and 4, then that's a problem. So I like I, I'm I'm agreeing with Ty. I think he's got me convinced. Go with McKinnon, try and get the win because there's potential here for Fry to go down early in the season and struggle. Um he's gotta he's gotta try and steal some points or steal a win here. But I'm I'm gonna go with Jeremy um on this one. I think he's got he's got too much going on his side with too many healthy guys who can produce Andy uh, prediction uh, I've got Jeremy Fryer you should start Flowers Fryer you should drop Goff and go pick up Zach Moss before he's fully healthy so that way in week two you have more options that can actually play for you while Kamara's still dealing with his suspension you don't need Goff you'll figure out your quarterback when if and when Jackson gets hurt or a bye week comes up you don't need him right now unfuck your bench that was great advice, by the way. Don't, don't say that because I've been considering picking him up for Colt, dropping Colt Komet and going and grabbing somebody like that. All right. Well, I'll send Fryer a message so that he has an opportunity to do it before <laughs> you do it before the podcast comes out. So great advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you got Jeremy? Yep. All right, cool. Let's go to Paul versus Andy. Uh, Paul. Deshaun Watson at quarterback, Justin Jefferson and Devontae Adams at wide receiver, Joe Mixon, Isaiah Pacheco at running back, David Njoku, tight end, Khalil Herbert, flex, Matt Gay, Chicago defense. Um, On his bench, he's got Aaron Rodgers, Deontay Johnson, Hollywood Brown, Gabe Davis, Keontae Ingram, and Sam Laporta. Um. I don't, I'm definitely, I'm not starting Marquise Brown. I'm not starting Gabe Davis week one. You could talk me into it, but with his wide receivers, you can't talk me into it. 
Um, Sam Laporta against Kansas City. David Njoku against Cincinnati. I think I'm probably rolling David Njoku just week one to see what happens. Sam Laporta is a rookie. I don't know that I'm playing him. He hasn't really had it much. He's been playing all the first team snaps, Laporta, and preseason, but he hasn't done much. I think he's going to be a stud moving forward, but week one, I'm not starting him. Um, Aaron Rodgers against Buffalo or Deshaun Watson against Cincinnati would be your other option. And I think I'm going to leave Deshaun Watson in and hope for the best. Uh, Buffalo's defense is solid. And I think you kept Watson with the hope that he's going to be your starter and going to be good. So I'm going to play Watson. Um, so I think I'm leaving uh, Paul's starting lineup as is. Yep, I agree. I think Deontay Johnson's not going to see the light of day uh, with having three startable running backs and Jefferson and Adams. So no reason to even consider that in week one. And then um, I think Rogers and Watson are probably both in shootouts this week. Um, Jets Buffalo could be a little bit more defensive than the Browns Bengals game, but either way, I think all of the teams involved there are, are teams that can score. So they're going to have to keep up with each other. But I think the little Watson Joku stack is, is decent. Um, so ride that and see how how it works. I understand the stack. Uh, one thing that we try to look at in matchups is the other team. And no offense, Andy, right now, your team does not scare me. I Watts, Watson is a kind of boomer bust type quarterback in week one. We don't really know what's going to happen. He did not look good in the back half of the last last season so I think I would put Rodgers in because I think Rodgers fresh he's got weapons I, I think he's getting at least the two touchdowns that you would hope to get out of your quarterback I'd hit the floor on Rodgers rather than the ceiling that Watson could give and if we both th- if we think that they're going to be in shootouts I'm going to take Rodgers in shootout so I, I think I'm going to go Rodgers here personally uh just because i don't think it's not it's not like andy's team is bad it's just it doesn't have a ton of like high-end players to where it's like oh well i've got to like get that ceiling player in i I think rogers is more than capable of giving him the points that he needs and jefferson and adams and mixon pacheco herbert like all these guys are very good week one players even if we think that you know, like Herbert could be supplanted later on. Week one, like that's a good team. I, I would stick with Rodgers, get the consistent play, a little bit of a ceiling there. I I'm worried about Watson personally. So um I, I don't have I any think, issues with uh give Watson a week and see how he's doing. I do that, think that's, that's the that's kind of what I would do. I, I would wait to see if he actually is able to hit those things that he wants to hit. We know what Rogers is. Rogers is Rogers. I don't like Rogers this year, so I'm going Watson, and I feel very good about that. Also, we talked about Jamal Williams being a keeper earlier, and like you kept him to play him. I, I think this is a Watson situation. You you kept him. You you start him. You see what he is. If he if if he sucks, then you put Rogers in. But, but in fantasy, put your but money where fantasy, your mouth is. But in fantasy, you don't see what he is because you start him like it's not like the nfl like it's not like i have watson and rogers like sitting on my roster in the nfl and i get to see what watson is because i got him for cheaper whatever like this is fantasy football i have to i have to see like based off of the matchups and like what's going on what's you know who's going to give me the most likely points and right now Paul needs the floor of Rodgers. He doesn't need Watson. He's hoping Watson has a ceiling going forward. You got that because you had a super team two two years or whatever. This is good management. This is good management. Take my advice. Good management for two years and bad management for the five years preceding to give you good management. So I'm just saying. Anyway, let's move on. We're we're going to. I'm I'm just saying is that that's that's my thought. Week one, see what Watson is. Put in the 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 normal guy that the guy is just going to give you good points the white guy. as a podcast as a podcast host, we're moving on from paul's team 
I make decisions around here. You okay? don't make decisions. You're right, but we're going to pretend. Andy's team. Andy's team. Quarterback, Joe Burrow. Put wide some respect receiver. on it. Wide receivers, Amari Cooper, Brandon Ayuk. Running backs, Bijan Robinson. Some of you would be trying to give him Brian Robinson, but he took Bijan. Please. And, Brian. and Damian Pierce. Tight end, Dallas Goddard. In the flex, DeAndre Swift. Kicker, Young Ho Koo. Defense, Baltimore versus Houston, to be specific. On his bench, he's got Cortland Sutton, Tyler Higby, Elijah Mitchell, Tyler Algier, Quentin Johnson, and Romeo Dubs. So, with that, uh, Elijah Mitchell, currently a backup, fill-in breather type guy. Tyler Algier, same thing, handcuff for Bijan. Cortland Sutton, Interesting I'm not playing this over week. Cooper. What's that? I said interesting this week. He is, but I'm still not sure. I, I mean, I'm not playing him over Cooper Iuke. I don't think I like both of them better. I get Swift. Cor- I that well that was that was going to be where I would go. Um, if you're going to start somebody, it would be Sutton over DeAndre Swift. Um, right now it's showing storms in New England or whatever, but. What the hell? Um, Cortland Sutton with Jer- Jerry Judy out being a number one target uh, against Las Vegas. Las Vegas isn't great. So this could be a big week for Russell Wilson to throw to Sutton, throw to Dolchik, throw to those guys, Marvin Mims, while Jerry Judy is out. And and just see what they have. Sean Payton's going to want to show the NFL what Denver is. Um, I think Swift is going to be the number one back in Philly. But what that what that's gonna be in Philly, I don't know. It could be a touchdown in 30 yards because Jalen Hurts takes touches. Uh Gainwell takes a couple passing downs. They put in Penny for a couple downs. Swift gets the most carries, but what is the most carries in Philly? Yeah. Um so I think this week I would take the swing on Sutton over Swift. Um, also, you've got Goddard Swift both there. Philly's going to score, so it's not a big deal. Um, but to diversify, take the number one receiver in Denver, where I think Sean Payton is going to throw the ball. I, th- I think I'd throw Sutton in there in your flex over Swift. Yeah, that's that's what I'm toying with, and the diversification is the main reason that I'm leaning toward making the switch. Having Goddard and Swift, who can't play off each other at all, is uh, not my favorite. Uh, it's it's not a great way to build a roster, but if you're going to have two guys on the Eagles, it's not terrible. Belichick has made uh, questionable GM decisions. He's made questionable coordinator decisions, but his defense is always solid, and having two Eagles there is a little scary. So... Um, I, I I do think I, I agree with Ty. Sean Payton is going to want to throw the ball. Sutton's going to be the main guy to benefit, and we don't really know what where Swift is going to fit in. So I'm okay with Sutton there. Um, really, either way is fine. But any running back against New England, I think in the past just doesn't. You know, it was always kind of disappointing. I mean, we're looking at week one, so I I think I'd go Sutton here just to see if I can get that that just he'd be a target monster based off the injuries that they have over there. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'd go Sutton. All right, who are you guys picking? I'm gonna take Paul week one. Sorry, Andy. Hey, you do what you gotta do. I did. I did. I did exactly what I had to do. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take Paul week one. Uh, I'm gonna take Bijan for 120 and two, and <laughs> I will be comfortably ahead come Monday evening. So it's all me, baby. It. All right. Brian Robinson leading to the promised land. Okay. Or B- Bijan. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's our first uh, differential here. Uh, Boyer and I take Paul. Andy takes himself. We're not going to go straight down the board. So, Andy, move us into our next matchup here. All right. Uh, Walker's got Pat Mahomes tomorrow night, A.J. Brown, D.J. Moore at wide receiver, 
Najee and Brian St. Robinson at running back, Dalton Schultz at tight end, Debo in the flex, uh, Jake Elliott and Dallas defense on the bench, uh, Mike Pittman Jr., uh, Brandon Cooks, Zeke, Damian Harris, Chuba Hubbard, and a unemployed Kareem Hunt. Um, I don't think I'm getting any of these guys in over Debo, even against Pittsburgh. Um, anybody see anything they want to argue for? We lost Boyer. That's all right. Uh, I If I was going to do it, Michael Pittman over DJ Moore, but that's not going to happen. Most people will not make that change. Yeah. DJ Moore, once again, was a keeper with AJ Brown, expecting him to be the one-two punch. Um, I Michael Pittman's been so mediocre, but I like Michael Pittman. I like and with a rookie quarterback too, right? And and I like Michael Pittman, but sure, but we, I'd I'm like to sure see that how that offense looks after right. after a week. But but I, I don't know. Well, like like you said, I wouldn't put any of them in over uh, Debo, especially week one. Even with Pittsburgh, I would probably make the move to to get rid of DJ Moore with Pittman if Pittman could promise me numbers. I would keep. AJ Brown Debo and then throw Pittman in, but you're going to keep DJ more week one because they've got green Bay, which should be a fairly decent matchup and hopefully Justin Fields targets more for your sake. So, yeah. All right. Let's punt over to Microsoft teams here. Uh, Boyer's got uh, Josh Allen at quarterback T Higgins, Mike Evans, starting wide receivers, Miles Sanders, Brees Hall at running back, Evan Ingram at tight end, Antonio Gibson uh, having the other half of the commandos running backs here in his flex, Justin Tucker, San Francisco Niners defense, um, a pup listed uh, JCT on the bench, Kenneth Gainwell, uh, Dalvin Cook, Chris Godwin, Rasheed Rice, and Greg Dolchich on the bench. Um I like Rasheed Rice, but I'm not playing him this week. Um, Godwin versus Evans. You're probably playing Evans because of the touchdown upside in the standard league. Um, and then Gibson against the Cardinals in a game that I expect them to be running. I feel pretty good about that. Um, it, what it really comes down to for me is whether you're comfortable playing Brees Hall or if you're playing Dalvin Cook. Um I'm sure we'll get more sound bites about that as the week goes on, but I think I'm leaning Dalvin this week. Um, yeah. So, so, so the only other, the only other thing I would say is is if I knew Tampa Bay had a quarterback that was going to be good, play both play those both wide, them. play both those wide receivers, move Gibson up, get rid of Hall. Um, but I'm not sure with Baker Week One against minnesota that's what we want to do um but that's really the only other thing i can say i mean dalvin cook versus Brees hall at least you have both of them they can interchange before monday night so you i mean that's going to come down to what we hear from the jets what we hear from all the media about oh Brees hall's on a snap count dalvin cook's gonna be the starter or Brees hall is good to go and then i if they if they say Brees hall is good to go and they, they're not talking about snap counts, which I think they will be. So I think I'm starting Cook. But if they don't yeah. say anything about snap counts and they say he's good to go, clear, I'm going to start Brees Hall and, and hope for the best. I know that they're still going to work him in. But as long as they're not calling it a snap count, what's the difference between a 50-50 timeshare with him and Cook? I think Brees Hall, Brees Hall has the bigger upside playability, and I, I would take that. But if they're saying snap count, I'm going with Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I think I'm going just to make my argument on the other side. I think I'm going Dalvin even either way, um, because it, it almost similar to the Javante Pirine argument here. Like, regardless of what the sound bites say, like either you're going to go Dalvin because of the way that they're talking and feeling concerned about Brees Hall's usage, or they're saying Hall's good to go, everything's peachy keen but there's nothing wrong with Dalvin either. And it's probably still going to end up looking like a 50, 50 split. So 50, 50 splits your best case scenario because they're easing hall back into it. They do have two stud running backs. And why would you give 75% of the carries to your young guy coming off an injury when you're trying to keep him healthy for the long run? Like, I don't, I don't see a scenario where 
it's anything better than a 50-50 split. And sure, if it was a 50-50 split, I'd prefer a healthy Brees Hall to do better than Dalvin Cook in that 50-50 split. But if that is like if that's the absolute best case scenario and what makes sense in my mind, I'm just going with Dalvin and hoping that he gets more of it. For your thoughts. Uh, I am a Brees Hall truther. Like I just I love this guy. I love it's okay to be wrong. I love the way that he runs. Um, coming off an injury is concerning. Uh, it, but if they say he's good to go, he's my guy. If they say they're going to split carries, um, he's got the big play potential to me. Um, so if they if they split ten carries, ten carries, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my bet on Brees Hall to get a. 50 yard run or a, a 35 yard touchdown or whatever it is like and it could be is that they try and get him outside of the tackle box just to prevent contact and things like that let him you know do his thing on on the outside and i'd still take that on the 10 carries touches whatever it is so unless they come out and they say you know we're gonna make sure Dalvin gets the bulk of the work, then I'm starting Breeze Hall. If they come out and say, hey, you know, Breeze is doing great. He's going to play, but he's not going to, he's not going to be our bell cow. He's not going to be our guy. Then that's when I'll start considering uh, Dalvin at that point. Um, I do think is that they will give Dalvin a, a good amount of carries in the first few weeks. That's why he signed him. So, to me, it's more more likely that it's a 50-50 split, and I'm going to go with big playability and the and the ceiling that I I view Hall have because I don't think Dalvin has the the speed and the burst at this point to to do that. All right, so who you guys got? Walker. I'm also going to go Walker. I, I want to make a note that I understand Walker will. Pr- probably win like i i do I, I think the probability is there for him make your pick but i'm gonna go with me because i gotta believe in my team i gotta you know i gotta give him the rah-rah speech so rah-rah uh, speech it is week you one will be perfect in every aspect of the game At every aspect of the game thank you ty so in future weeks i will be much more confident once Brees hall becomes a more consistent part and we know what's going to happen but for this week and Mike Shane Evans has a contract and wants to play football. But I'm the owner of the team. I got to have confidence in my team. Picking my team. All right. So, uh, Boyer, I need you to, within the next 30 seconds or so, get to uh, Colin versus Robbie. If you, <laughs> you know, 30. Click a couple buttons, make sure you get where you need to go. All right. So, Colin, that was under, way under 30 seconds. That was great. That was good. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, Colin has uh, Kirk Cousins. Blah. Uh, Olave, uh, Devonta Smith, Eckler, Jacobs, uh, Kincaid at tight ends. He's got Waddle at the flex, which just look real good. He's got Bass in the Denver defense, and on the bench is sitting Geno Smith, uh, Meyer at tight ends, Roshan Johnson, Bateman, uh, the Jameson. Uh, JMO, yeah. I was like JMO and uh the New York Jets defense because why a not? Lot of, a lot of Jay Williams in this league. I just can't help it. There is a lot, like a, it's <laughs> kind of killing me. Um honestly, I'm not picking anybody on his bench to start over. I, mean, I just can't imagine like you're not starting Gino against the Rams against Kirk. Maybe the Rams are bad, but I'm still starting Kirk. I mean, the Rams still have, you know, good players and stuff on that defense. And Tampa Bay is, I mean, they've been talent now for a little bit. So I'm okay with Kirk. I'm not happy that Kirk is his quarterback, but that's who you got to start. So he's a top eight quarterback there. every year. He's just not sexy. Yeah. And, and, and Andy, do you have a, anything on that? Um, I am playing Kirk Cousins in week one. Um, 
Gino did well last year. It'd be great if he could do it again. Sounds like uh, Jackson Smith and Jigma is going to play week one, which is great news for Seattle. Um, I don't think Gino can support three fantasy relevant wide receivers, but it certainly doesn't hurt him as a, as a quarterback. Um, but I don't know. I'm not super jazzed about either of these guys. G- Gino right. is also one of those quarterbacks where he had a great first half of the year and struggled in comparison in the back half. So I'd stick with the guy who's at least been able to handle bad teams. And I think I, I do think Tampa Bay is a bad team. Um, and I think he'll be all right with Kirk Cousins. Yep. Let's um, move over to Robbie. I'm getting there. Sorry, I'm just Dude. trying to help move this thing along. Yeah, and I was getting there, but now we're talking about it. And hey, we're taking a long around. time because you that. needed us to go through all these rosters because you didn't review the draft. Right? Fair. Anyway, I was getting there. You need to chill. Uh, all right, so Prescott at quarterback. Uh, man, that is just the battle of mediocre quarterbacks. We got uh, Hopkins and Kirk at wide receiver. Uh, Saquon Barkley. Aaron Jones at running back, George Kittle at tight end, uh, James Connor in the flex with the Dallas Cowboys kicker. Don't know who that is. Uh, Her name Aubrey. is Aubrey. Yep, Aubrey and uh, the New England Patriots defense. He's Against on the bench. The Eagles. On the bench is keeper Hawkinson. Uh, Jerry Judy on the bench, Terry McLaurin on the bench, questionable with uh, his injury, uh, Deontay Foreman, Derek Carr, and somehow drafted MVS. I said upside playing Kansas City. Everybody's taking a shot. I, I honestly don't understand that one, even at a dollar. But uh, really, I'm looking at Kittle has a groin injury, so I assume you're starting Hawkinson in all reality, depending on what happens on the Friday, Saturday, right? Yeah? I think I'm starting Hawkinson against Tampa Bay over Kittle anyway. I mean, Pitt is good defense. Purdy loves Kittle. Purdy loves Kittle, so I think that helps. But Hawkinson's just a stud. So I... I'm going to lean Hawkinson here, even in this situation. I just I don't know what the Niners' offense is going to be this year, who it's going to run through, what what they're going to do. Yeah. I'm going to guess Kittle's going to be and heavily that, involved. But... And the, the matchup favors Hawkinson. I mean, regardless. But Kittle's got, a, got an injury. He's had injuries before, and he doesn't do as well when everyone is healthy. And everyone is healthy, so he's going to – like, how many targets can you expect him to see, you know? Uh, James Conner at the flex. Uh, Anybody want anybody else? One of the tight ends? Uh, Anything? I don't think there's anybody else here. I mean, I'm not playing MBS over a guy who's guaranteed to have the entire Cardinals offense run through him. And Terry and Judy are banged up if they play and you're dealing with Kittle being also banged up and putting Hawkinson in over him. So I don't see a world where you're putting Kittle in over Connor just to have both tight ends. Even if they were, even if Kittle was healthy, I think you can make a decision to start Hawk or Kittle, but neither one goes in over Connor for me. If, if Judy plays, (coughs) Judy is like plays and ready to roll. Do you start him over Connor? No, no, I start him over not. Christian Kirk. I start him over Christian Kirk if you can guarantee me he's good to go and whatever. But I'm still not starting this week coming off of an injury. Completely agree. This team is set up a little weird. I'm not yeah. sure about this team. Yep. All right. Who you guys got? Colin. Colin comfortably. Yeah, Colin by a lot. All right, so let's move to Charlie versus the duo. Charlie's team is anchored by Mr. Justin Fields himself. 
Jamar Chase, DK Metcalf at wide receiver, Travis Etienne, Alexander Madison, and running back slots, Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, Greg Joseph, and Seattle defense. On the bench, he's got Rashid, or wow, why Rashid? Rashad White. Rashad, not Rashid. I got I'll get you. This out. David Montgomery, Kenny Pickett, Tank Bigsby, Gerald Everett, and Elijah Moore. With that, um, <sighs> Charlie's bench might be better than Chris's starters. <laughs> I am leaving the starting lineup as is. Um, Gerald Everett versus Pitts could be a question, but I'm going to go ahead and just give Pitts a start here and hope that he is what they drafted him to be at some point. Um, that offense is going to look better this year than it has, supposedly. You know, they've got London and Pitts and, and Bijan now, so if it's not better than what it was, then I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, so I'm going to leave Pitts in. I'm giving Ridley the shot there. Metcalf, Chase are locked in. You could, I mean, you could say White over Madison maybe, but I like Minnesota offense better. Um, and I'm not going to start White over Ridley. I think Ridley has the higher upside. He's going to get 10 targets and be fine. So I'm not worried about taking that shot. I'm going to leave Ridley in, leave it as is. Any thoughts on uh, Charlie's side? Um, I People aren't going to like this, particularly Charlie. I don't think Madison, especially against the Bucks, is a great play. I'm putting Monty in over him. Um, if, if we're going, people Monty, aren't going to like that. But I, I would put Monty in over over Madison. If we're going Monty, I I, I think I'd just run White and, and hope for the upside as a starter in Tampa Bay. But I mean, Duo's team is kind of banged up right now. So, do you need the upside this week, or do you need to just get your points? Yeah, I mean, I, I get it, but I think Rashad White's going to get 15 to 17 touches, and, and that's should be a safe floor. So, I don't know. Boyer, thoughts? It's hard to bench Madison, but I but I understand it, because I think I think Monty just fits what the Lions want to do especially early on so well that I feel like that he's going to get a lot of volume. I, I really do. I, I feel like I feel like Gibbs is going to get a lot of like sweeps and passing work and you know whatever it is to get him into space and they're going to lean on Monty to be kind of the combination of Swift and um, Williams that they wanted last year and that could change throughout the year as Gibbs you know, gets in the offense and, you know, they, you know, figure out what he is. But I don't mind the Montgomery change here. I, I don't. I, I think he's a very safe 10 points. Very safe 10 points. All right. So let's run over to the duo side. They're starting Jalen Hurts at quarterback, Garrett Wilson, Keenan Allen at wide receiver, Tony Pollard, Deion Jackson at running back, maybe Travis Kelsey at tight ends, Christian Watson in the flex, McPherson and New Orleans defense against Tennessee. On the bench, they've got A.J. Dillon, Bryce Young, JSN, Samaji Pirine, Juju, and Ty Chandler. They currently don't have a tight end to back up Travis Kelsey, which may or may not be healthy. So that may or may not be a problem for the duo. Um, I am not sold on uh, Deion Jackson either, but I I don't know. Do you start A.J. Dillon, which is in a timeshare with Aaron Jones over what is supposedly the starter in Indy? I think Evan Hull and Deion Jackson split time. So I think it's a... a Two timeshare situation. I don't like Indy's offense. Uh, we kind of talked about that with Pittman and Richardson earlier. So I think I'm just gonna move Dylan up over Jackson and and 
take the shot on Dylan getting half the work with with uh, Aaron Jones and hope for the best. I don't feel comfortable starting an Indianapolis running back this week. So I, you guys may feel totally different than me, but give me your thoughts. Uh, let's start here. Uh, assuming no trade happens, uh, free agent tight ends, Juwan Johnson or Chiggy? Who do they play? Each other. They play each other. Juwan. Um, also, probably. other options, Jake Ferguson, Irv Smith, Trey McBride, Logan Thomas. Derek Carr has tar- uh, targeted tight ends in the past. Juwan. Uh, Jake Ferguson. All right. Not not great. Uh, let's just point that out. Um, I welcome. That's available. <laughs> I think um, I'm totally fine with Deion Jackson. I don't think that Evan Hole's actually a thing. Um, I think that that's that's a Twitter thing, not a real life thing. Um, Zach Moss might be healthy enough to play. It sounds like I thought I was kind of thinking he was going to be week two, but the reports are sounding like. Um, he, he might be playing this week, but coming off a broken arm I, and the Colts, I don't think the Colts are trying to win games all that hard right now. So I'm sure that they're going to ease him along. I'm totally fine with playing Deion Jackson, even with the options that they've got on the bench, but, um, it's a tough spot for them this week with the injuries they've got. So, uh, this Kelsey thing's a real bummer for them. I've always liked a uh, quadzilla. I think in the past when they've needed him and they've just like just pounded the rock, you know, with uh, with him, he's been fantastic. And I feel like that there's a chance that they do that in week one against what could be a very, you know, potent Bears offense, which would sound really weird, but that offense could move the ball down the field and get field goals and stuff. So if you want to keep it away from fields, you run the ball, you run it between the tackles. I think I'd go with Dylan here. Um, I would I would put in um, P. Ryan over Christian Watson in the flex with Chris, Christian Watson banged up. Um, I'm not I'm not jazzed about Dylan. Um, I'm not jazzed about P. Ryan either. But given the Javante injury. Um, I think I think Sean Payton and the Denver running backs are a nice uh, a nice relationship there. Um, the Raiders aren't that great, so I think I think that's what I would do. But there's not. I mean, so, and I'm I'm not strong in any of these convictions. I just am leaning that way. So, so, so I personally doing... like I personally like Charlie's team over Duo this week. That's the team I'm gonna pick to win. Yep. I, I think Christian Watson gives you the higher upside over Pete Ryan if that's what we're looking for to get a win. Even if Watson's banged up, he's got big play potential. I think you have to leave him in the lineup. Go ahead, Boyer. So the the one thing I want to bring up is Lafleur came from the Titans. And I think he's always wanted to have a run-first offense, specifically behind a Derrick Henry-type player, which is Dylan. I think we see that this year. I I think that Dylan gets a lot of work. I I feel like they take the ball away from the quarterback. They give it to the running backs. And I feel like Dylan benefits from that. All right. So who you guys taking in this matchup? Charlie. Charlie. All right, across the board, Charlie. Sorry, duo. All right, it's all down Um, to Kelsey. That's that's a kick in the nuts for the duo. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna hit it real quick. Pow! What are you drinking? We're gonna speed through this. We're gonna skip dad joke because uh, we're already pushing an hour. Uh, I'm drinking Coors Light. uh, My typical sponsor. It's scotch tonight. Ooh! It's not. It's it's water. That's wow. one. That's, That's a, a thirty-two cup. ounce scotch. <laughs> uh, Colin Kelly is going to appreciate this. He better be watching. Got an Addy Light. Ready for it. Perfect. 
All right, so we're going to skip dad joke because it was a couple minutes long. We're going to go ahead and go right into over under just to keep us moving. We're at an hour. So, Andy, lead us off into uh, over under. All right. Sorry to I'm, break your heart. All right. I am going to start with the top division um, and in no particular order. Um, I've got Robbie at six and a half wins. What do you guys think? Uh, I'll start just so Ty has a chance to think. I got Robbie under. I got him at four. All right. Ty, you want me to go? Um, no, I can go. I was I was just pulling his team up real quick, so I had a quick reminder of where we were at. We just discussed them, but you know how I didn't prep for this week. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say under. I've got uh some of these injury concerns mixed with some of his older players that I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm gonna go under for this one. I'm also going under. Yahoo's got them at six and nine currently, but Yahoo doesn't know what they're talking about. So the the, the double tight end thing never works out. Just doesn't. It has not historically. That is accurate. All right. Uh Fryer, I've got at eight and a half wins. Uh I also have Fryer under. Um I like elements of Fryer's team. I do. Uh, but there's a construction issue there where there's problems. I've got them at six. Um, I've got them about seven, seven wins, maybe eight, but I don't think he gets to the eight and a half. Yeah, I'd, I'd flirted with the seven, but I couldn't give him eight. Yeah, I think Kenneth Walker could be huge for him. Having Addison and Flowers is a nice bit of upside. And once Kamara comes back, this is going to be a really nicely rounded team. But having yeah. to wait three weeks to get your team rolling is going to drag that down. Yeah, I mean, the question is, if he's 0-3 by the time Kamara comes back, and there's, is Kamara going to be Kamara? Like, for me, I think he probably I mean, on this sells. team, he doesn't have to be. If he's just a solid flex, that's all your roster really needs him for if he's anything right, more he than needs, that he than needs great as a wide receiver he doesn't he needs wide receivers he doesn't need running backs yeah. <laughs> i i'm kind of with you guys on that seven to eight mark um the triple baltimore stack doesn't thrill me um if it's the greatest offense of all time weeks. we're gonna look silly just saying yeah. Hey, you know what? I don't have then, any issues then, with the triple Baltimore stack. I think this team is going to be very good in the back half of the year. It's just whether or not <laughs> he's digging out of a huge hole. Like can Having... he get to the back half of the year? That's right. The exactly. The two rookie receivers, one of which is going to be starting for you every week, this... maybe two, depending on if you want to keep playing McKinnon. And then the Kamara suspension, like it's it's just a, a this... big hole to dig before your team gets rolling. This... This feels like a in money ball when they're like eight games back <laughs> at the all star break. That's that's this working. That's this like, working. Like, if, if he could just be a like a game or two under five hundred, like midway through the year, then he could be dangerous the back half. But the question is, does he get there? So the real question is, is he still Fryer? And and <laughs> which he is. Which means I'm not terribly worried, which is why I put him at six, and you you losers are putting him at seven or eight. <laughs> Fair enough. Love you, Trier. Uh, un under and under. All right, Andy, go on. Um, all right. I have uh, me at six and a half. I've got you at the over at eight. Um, part of this is just knowing you as a manager. You'll figure out a way to... Will you wiggle whatever weaknesses your team has into advantages? Um, but generally when I was looking at the schedule, the nice thing is like I put Fryer and Robbie both under, which means you're gonna benefit, you know, on, on those, you know, divisional matchups. So I, I've got you at eight. Okay. I, I think six and a half is low for you. Um I like how you put your team together. I like Higby. I like Goddard. You've got a good two two good tight ends. You've got Mitchell, which could very well be a good piece in San Fran. Tyler Algier is the backup to Bijan. Phenomenal. Damian Pierce should have a lot of work. Your wide receivers are good with Cooper and Ayuk. They're not top tier, but they're going to be serviceable top 15 or so wide receivers. Um, you got decent depth. 
Um, I, I'm going to put you over the six and a half because because I know you'll manage it that way. And in a mixture of Bijan, Damian Pierce, Goddard, your wide receivers, and Joe Burrow, like that's a good combination of players. I, I got you higher than six and a half. So if Bijan doesn't end up being Bijan, though, it'll be under. Like he, he's you can say that. Great for, you can say that for anybody though. If if Kenneth I, Walker I, is a bad I Kenneth would, Walker this year. No, I, I mean I would argue there's several teams that they can they could sustain a loss that big. I I don't know if Andy's team can. That's my point. Like this, is, he's the linchpin. If he's a good player, and he doesn't have to be great. If he's a good player, over. If he's subpar somehow, I don't think he will be. Like that could be a problem for you. Well, I think Bijan's the number one running back in the league, and I don't think it's going to be close. Oh, so, no, I, I I firmly believe you will be watching the games on Sunday with the Bears on one side and Bijan in front of your face on the other, like watching him just run over everybody. But Yeah, I think when Bijan <laughs> hits that first 30-yard touchdown in the second quarter of the game this week, everybody's going to see the highlight and go, oh, shit, like we should have, we should have known. Like the – the Falcons led the league in rushing last year. They have a fantastic offensive line. They want to run the ball. They have a running quarter or a running coach. Um, Tyler Algier just ran for a thousand yards and is not a good running back. And then you add all of that up to now give the starting job to the best running back prospect right. since Saquon. Right. I'm just saying he's going like, to be he, a top three running back like you, at the least. Right. You made him the linchpin. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm I saying mean, he won't do it. Just saying he's he's the guy. I was very comfortable making him the linchpin. Fair. All right. Let's move to Boyer. Boyer, eight and a half. I've got over. Um my gut was nine. But I was I was missing total number of wins at some point, so I bumped everybody up who I thought was a good team, and I feel like I have a good team, so I put myself at ten. I, I'm not sure I'll actually get there. I think nine is a solid number. Um, the Jonathan Taylor move was rough, but if he comes out in week five on whatever team he is, and he's Jonathan Taylor, then y'all are in trouble. If he doesn't, then I still think I'm at nine. Does that make sense? Like, I, yeah. like it, it, I, it was a bad look to start, and then I feel like the draft went my way afterwards. So sure. I mean, we'll see how injuries and things like that plan out. But I've got depth. I've got solid players. I've got handcuffs. I, I don't see a whole lot of, like, downside on my team at this point yeah. i've got you under i think that what probably puts you over is the fact that our division isn't great um so that helps um but i've got you at eight wins this year i i'm sitting here i'm sitting here waffling back and forth between eight and nine probably yeah uh, which it makes it's it a good over out. under because like which i said like eight. i had my team at nine i had to add a a right. game to a bunch of teams and I just added it to the top. So I, and and Boyer hit it. I mean, he's got Jonathan Taylor, which is going to be a huge key to this year when he comes back. What does he look like? Where does he go? I think the other key is going to be Mike Evans. Does Mike Evans get traded? Does he stay in Tampa Bay? Does he hate his life in Tampa Bay? Does he play hard? I I don't know what Mike Evans is this year. And I and I hope because I have him in other leagues, he's going to be a good player again. Uh, but he makes me nervous. The Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook thing, is it going to be Brees Hall? Are they going to keep a timeshare? Are you going to be playing guess which running back each week? Uh, so I'm hoping for your sake that that all this kind of pans itself out, but that's where I'm kind of waffling back and forth. But it, like Andy said, your division is not great, so it gives you that possibility to be at 9, 10, 11 wins if, if the rest of your division is that bad still. Thanks, division. Appreciate you. <laughs> So, all right. With that, I'm going to put, if, if we're going to take a prediction, I'm going to take Boyer to win this division. Um, I think it will be between you two, um, but I'm going to take Boyer to edge out Andy. Um, if you guys want to take a quick pick at this one. 
I think that's probably the popular pick. I I I don't like the players on Boyer's team outside of Brees Hall and Josh Allen. So I for that reason I'm gonna pick me. Um I I definitely see where this works for him, but I'm not a fan. Uh I don't like Andy's team minus Bijan, so <laughs> but we're we're at least on the same page as that, but um yeah, I've got me at one, Andy at two, Fryer at three, Robbie at four. Yeah, I think that's what I've got, except for that just feels fine. I mean, there's there's going to be a ton of movement and trades and things like that, obviously, that are going to make a difference. But and that could be a big difference between me and Andy if he makes that that one big trade that he always seems to make. He, he's going to leapfrog me relatively easily. All right, Chris. Let's go to six the, and a half. Let's go to the bad division. Chris, six and a half. I've got him just under. Ty. Uh, a lot of it's going to probably hinge on Cooper Cup. Um, I'm going to go under. I am not a big fan of of James Cook year year long. I'm not a big fan of Raheem Mostert year long. I don't know what Jameer Gibbs is going to be. Really what you're banking on right now is Tariq Hill, Trevor Lawrence, and what should have been Cooper Cup. Yeah, I've got him under. I do think it's close. Like as much as everybody's been shitting on Chris's team, it's not bad. Like not having Cooper Cup is a bummer, but he only paid $20 for him. So it's not like he tanked his team. It's like, granted, the duo is probably only going to be without Kelsey for a game or two, but you know, it's not like he lost his top draft pick if we had drafted a week prior and didn't know about the cooper cup thing that would be one thing but yeah. he's got enough to work with here did you guys see tyree kill uh in a press conference said that he doesn't actually watch any game film he just knows the game so well and that uh pretty much he just plays madden the night before and sees what their ratings are and stuff like that like i, I thought that was hysterical like I don't believe that for a second, but I want that energy on my team. So like, I, I I hope I'm wrong because I love Tyree kill. And I think he's got a decent enough team, but he's definitely got holes. And luckily, luckily for Tariq Hill, his team in Miami can still be good. Even if Chris's team is bad. Right. I mean, pretty much he just has to run fast and he knows that, but. (laughs) All right, Andy, hit me with the next team. All right. uh, This one's probably going to surprise people. Colin six and a half. Colin Kelly? Colin Kelly. Wow. Yeah, I have way over. Way over. Uh, I'm going to take the over as well. I don't know about way over. I've got him at seven, so... I've got him at ten. His quarterbacks are okay. His wide receivers are all young. and And, and good. I get it. But what I mean, is Chris they're all number twos on their team. Olave is probably not, but like Waddle and Smith are number twos, which they they do it as number twos. But like, it's not like we're looking at AJ Brown and Tyree Hill here, right? I and mean, then they, you look, at, but then you look at his bench. He's got Dalton Kincaid got and Jack Michael Mayer. Nothing on his bench. It's a fucked well, up got, team. He's got Dalton Kincaid and Mike and Michael Mayer's his two tight ends, rookie tight ends. Uh can can Josh Allen support a tight end? He doesn't normally. He throws his wideouts. He runs the ball in the end zone. Dawson Knox is still there. Like I, I, yeah, nobody's talking about that. But it's not like he left and they replaced him with Kincaid. I think right. Kincaid's better, but he's still a rookie tight end. Tight ends have to block and do other things. And Dawson Knox is still there. So I I think there's enough question marks here to say I'm not going to put him way over. Colin is a good manager and Colin will find a way to make a good trade to get him where he wants to be. But based off of this, I'm going seven, maybe eight wins. Yep. I've got him at seven. Uh, Waddle was wide receiver. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He was wide receiver yeah. seven last he year. Was. He with was hot garbage at quarterback for at least eight of the games. Cause his other quarterback had, you know, brain potato, damage, mashed potatoes for brains. So, like when we say Waddle is his wider is like a wide receiver, like that's like we have to acknowledge that there's a difference. 
here between other teams wide receiver twos and the Dolphins wide receiver two. So I don't really think that that's being honest with yeah. what his I team mean, looks like. The Eagles and the Dolphins both have relatively small receiving rooms in terms of who's on the field and who produces. That's fair, but I'm not as excited about it as, you know, I, I'm not going to say that Devonta Smith and Olave and Waddle are all going to finish in the top 12. Like I think that that's highly unlikely and that's pretty much where they were being drafted. Right. And keep in mind, Olave was wide receiver. I don't want to actually add this together. It looks like it's like 16 or so. So, and sure. then Devonta Smith was wide receiver 10. So all he has to do is between the three of them get the 8, 10, and 16. And I think that that's definitely doable. I, I don't feel like that that's a far-fetched at all. So I, I feel like saying they're all wide receiver two on their team. I, I feel like that that's kind of missing the mark. So when I look at his wide receiver room, it's one of the best wide receiver rooms in the league. And sure. they're young and have potential to even be better. Tyreek Hill is getting older. Does he lose a step? Does Waddle take another step forward? It's very possible. So like for me, like I feel like that's disingenuous to what's actually happening in the league. Um well, we could we could if we want to Kelly and, and he he added, I mean, he's got two good running backs, he's got three great wide receivers. As long as he has a decent quarterback, which he does. I mean, Kirk Cousins is a solid fantasy quarterback. I mean, I think Collins got the worst quarterback situation in the league. So as decent, as, sure, but Kirk as, Cousins decent as Cousins is, is, he's still number 11 or number 12 in terms of how many points I expect him to get compared to every other team in our league right now. Right, but I, I feel like that's he's a hole for it with the rest of his team, minus tight end. I agree with you guys on the rookie tight ends. That, that was ridiculous, but... I mean, we could we could. There's say, a reason why I have him as number ten. He's got the best skill group in the league to me. We we could say though, right? Like, oh, they're all young wide receivers that are going to be great. You could also look at it and say Eckler's one of the older running backs in the league. That's not a, a shouldn't take two hundred plus carries and get pounded all game every game. But he never does that. He never takes that. He he just produces out of efficiency and a ridiculous amount of touchdowns. And he has been for years. Like, and they haven't added anybody to. To prevent that, so no, like, but they brought I, he's in got the best brought, skill group in the league by by a decent margin to me. But they but they also brought in a, a new offensive coordinator that they've been talking loves to run the two two running back system with Pollard and Zeke. He ran it with whatever before that he ran it. He's right, going to bring the second Pollard, running back. Here. He doesn't have Zeke like he he has Eckler. That's like Joshua Kelly is not. We we've seen pretty much all the Chargers running backs at this point, except for Eckler flame out so I, i'm not worried about eckler in any way shape or form eckler is going to get his if the wide receiver group stays healthy he won't get 20 points a game but it'll be fine and so i think that the skill group there is clearly the best in the league the the problem is that colin just didn't pair him with a decent quarterback that's and that that's a problem but i, I still could, think that he's going to end up with 10 wins you point. could say you could say the same thing about Pollard his first two years in the league. He was garbage. He didn't do much the first two years in the league, and then he became running back 29, then running back eight. Right, so, but Joshua Kelly, like none of the Chargers players like look like Pollard or Eckler. In fact, at, Pollard and Eckler are actually very similar prototypical type of running backs where like right now in the league, that's like a big thing. Like none of them actually like prototype out to look like that they they're the pounded out backs that are actually being phased out so that makes no sense that that that, that's just a silly argument just wait and to go on no i was gonna say i don't think that eckler's going to thrive in this new offense the same way that he has the last couple of years um not because i think somebody behind him is coming up but i did I just think that it's going to be a very different scenario. He's not going to get 20 touchdowns like he has the last couple of years. All right, uh, Paul, six and a half. Uh, I've got over. I'll take him over as well. I will also be over. Um, Ty, six and a half. 
over. Have Ty just like a half game over that. Just like just getting there. And that's because his running back's so good. I imagine he will add somebody at some point when his team is like somehow almost 500 to be like, I gotta add somebody. Because the rest of his team is not great. But his running backs are so fantastic. He'll add somebody. Yeah, I think I gotta go over. I'm not super jazzed about Ty's team, but I gotta go over. Also, it was fun to put all four teams in that division right at six and a half and see what happened. Um, all right, uh, Jeremy, eight and a half. Uh, I have Jeremy over. I've got him also at ten wins. Um, I, f- I feel like he'll do most of his work early, uh, but he does have enough upside on his bench to sustain it to a degree. I'm not sure he's a championship, like a guaranteed championship winner because of it, but I I like his team to start with this year for sure. And he can make moves to make it work. I also have Jeremy over. I like Jeremy's team this year. Yeah. So I'll put him over whatever win total you want to give him at this point between that six and a half and eight and a half points. I'll put him over. All right. Uh, we've got duo eight and a half. Line was set before the Kelsey injury. <laughs> I've got under before the Kelsey injury. Ty? I, I mean, I would say under as well. I, I just, his running back room is, is not exciting to me. The Kelsey injury is not exciting to me. I, uh, his honestly outside of Wilson and Keenan Allen, Christian Watson's a shot. Jack Jackson Smith and Jigba's a shot. He's gonna put me playing flex roulette all year. I I'm not super jazzed about this team. Yeah, I I struggled to pinpoint what I thought about this team because this is effectively the uh, exact opposite of Collins team. Like they're pretty thin at receiver and running back. Like Pollard and Wilson are are good i think both are were being overdrafted this year but you know that's a a different story that doesn't mean that they'll be bad um keenan allen's still good um their rb2 if taylor comes back is either p ryan but or dylan or probably dylan but like not not good like they're real thin at the important positions granted it's easier to fill those positions on the waiver wire and stuff than it is to find a viable tight end. So assuming that Kelsey's healthy, having the top quarterback and the top tight end is a a really big deal. And we've seen that pay off for teams, but I don't know that there's enough here past that, even if Kelsey's healthy to beat the teams that they're going to need to beat, particularly in this division. So I'm going under. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not sold that Hurts is the top quarterback. Um, he lost his offensive coordinator. They've lost some offensive linemen. I think that teams will be prepared for the they got third and one, fourth and one. More than covers that. <laughs> the, the third and one, fourth and one, you know, push forward for a touchdown, like whatever it is they were doing. They didn't change the rules. Yeah, but but I, I I believe that there will be defenses over an entire offseason that will have made preparations and practice for it. You know, so for me, I'm not sure that Hurt Hurts is going to be the number one. There's potential. I can't disagree with that, but I'm not saying he's definitely gonna be number one. And if he is and he's got number one and number one uh tight end too, absolutely I agree. But I, I don't Hertz has a lot going against him this year. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. And then he just doesn't have a lot on the skill position side to like make up for it if Hertz isn't. So that's where I have him under. Whoever drafts Kelsey doesn't make the playoffs. Fair we enough. Talked yep. about that. We, we, we One out of the five out. years. I listened to the last Kelsey podcast and the last podcast told me that doesn't happen. So all right, let's go. Who's that? Uh, all right, Walker, eight and a half. Um, I'll start. I'll say over. I think Walker's team is uh, is very well built. I have it just under. 
Um, but there's potential there. I, I struggled with Walker's team probably the most, honestly. Um, I feel like he's got a decent enough team, uh, but there's there's holes and there's issues there. Um, and it didn't help that I was sitting next to Walker and he was very upset with Chris all draft because Chris was just stealing his guys left and right before Walker could get him. And I was like, yeah, that makes me money? question like, his judgment. I was like, Walker, just go get him. Like, you know, like you've got the money. And he was like, ah, it's just too much. And I was like, all right, like this, it is what it is. But like, I, I do think that Walker's got a decent enough team. I could be very wrong on this, but I had him just slightly under as of right now. But he could make lots of adjustments to make it work. I'm I'm not huge on his running back situation. I'm not huge on Brian Robinson. He doesn't have the depth. Um, so he's going to have to find a, another solid running back at some point. Um, I like A.J. Brown. I like D.J. Moore. I like Debo Samuel. Patrick Mahomes is great. I don't like his tight end in Dalton Schultz. Um, and I don't like I his think Dalton back. Schultz could be the leading receiver in Houston this year. He could be. But they also he was smart to sign the one year deal. The coach likes the tight end. I think that I think it's a great situation for him. To be fair, I could be the leading receiver on the Titans right now. That's what I'm saying. Like, there, <laughs> there's not a lot of talent there. Like, five foot eight Tank Dell isn't going to do it. Nico Collins or uh, post cancer John Mechie isn't exciting. Bobby Trees hasn't done well in four years, and getting a rookie quarterback and a shittier team isn't going to do it for him either. So, I mean, I don't think it's and like leading receiver doesn't mean I think he's going to be a right. stud, but at tight end, if he gets five touchdowns and 850 yards, that's a top six tight end. Yeah. That's fair. And Schultz I, but, a good tight end. He, but the running back situation still scares the shit out of me. Yeah, I mean, Brian Robinson at uh, running back too is he, he will, he will make an adjustment. He will buy somebody. He will figure out how to get there. So I think Walker has a good team. But those are my biggest flaws in his team is is the running back situation depth and and tight end. I just not a fan of Dalton Schultz. Yeah. And, and when I put under, it was because of the situation he's in right now, not what I think necessarily he could plug those holes with later. What was what was the over under? Eight and a half. Everybody in this division's eight and a half. Um, I've I'll got put, him I'll, over. Boyer's got him I'll, under. I'll put him over. All right. And Charlie, eight and a half. I got Charlie over. He's got a top to bottom solid team to start with. He's got a great, great base to work off of. I think I think Charlie has more holes than Walker. Where? Um, what is his holes? Well, I don't think Rashad White keeps the job as the number one all season. I mean, he could be his I, his running back four. Well, I don't like David Montgomery either. Okay, so, so they're both on his bench because he doesn't need either of them. This is a okay. deep roster. I, so I don't. Etienne, just... Madison, like both, that's fine. Ridley at the flex. Metcalf I'm not saying any of his obvious. running backs are like top end talent, but he's got four startable running backs every week. Yeah. I, I think he overpaid for Etienne, but he also got his hand cuffed. Andy, I think you've been teaching some of our league mates some people are learning guys they're listening so, but i i don't see a hole on his team there's not a lot of minus chase and maybe feels there's not a lot of top end talent on the team but he i don't think he has a hole on the team okay way. okay so i said i said i think he has more holes than walker walker's hole was tight end and running back too I'm not saying there's a lot of holes on Walker's team. So I, I don't know. I don't know where, where I'm getting jumped at that, that I'm saying his team sucks by any means. I'm saying, uh, no, no, you, you I like you Walker's know. team. You said and he Walker had more buys... holes and you just listed two holes on Walker's team. And me and Andy are struggling to see one hole on Charlie's team. Yeah. Okay. I don't see a hole on Charlie's team, but that's fair. Walker's team is also very good. So it, uh, I, I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm also, we, I don't know what Geno Smith and, and Seattle is going to be this year. They added Jackson Smith and Jigba. DK Metcalf should still be the number one, but there are three mouths to feed there. We talked about that earlier. Is DK going to be a top 10 wide receiver this year? Probably not. Is it going to be a top 24? Cause he's wide receiver two right now. And that's what you need to be. I think DK could easily be that. I, I mean, 
I don't think JSN takes away from DK as much as he takes away from Lockett. I think it's a matter of whether Gino can be closer to what he was last year than closer to what everybody thought he was before last year. But I think DK's due for more touchdowns than he got last year. All he has to do is scratch a thousand yards. And if he gets nine or 10 touchdowns, then you're putting up top 24 receiver numbers there. Right. If you're talking about wide receiver, you're talking about Chase's wide receiver one through 12 solid Metcalf one through 24 solid and Ridley one through 36 solid. Like uh, I'm not seeing the whole on Charlie's team. He doesn't have a ton of top end talent, but I don't see a hole in his team. If he adds one big player, then I think we're all in trouble, honestly, because I, I like, I this. think, I think if Walker adds one big running back, we're all in trouble too. So I, I don't, my my bad for having an opinion. You guys win. Charlie, your team's the best in the league. You're over whatever the win total is. So Andy, you're great. It was 11. Best, Andy, Andy, we're hurt. Best, the host best team in the league. You're, getting, you're going 13 wins. 13 wins, Char. I mean, I got him a 10, but or nine, but sure. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't even get to have an argument on my side. So I'm just going to, he's over what's, whatever the win total is. What's your argument? But it doesn't matter because I say one word and you're going to jump down my throat. So we're just going to move on. I'll be quiet. I can be quiet sometimes. Let, I, all right. Where I get, okay. Calvin Ridley is going to be a wide top 36 wide receiver. Is that what he was drafted to be? We talked about earlier. Oh, you know, Devonta Smith was drafted higher than he should be. Well, these people are drafted higher than they should be this year. Was Calvin Ridley drafted to be a top 36 receiver? Or was he drafted to be a top? 15 receiver i mean oh, i I, I have receiver. ridley in the top 20 but and he, and he was a two dollar keeper so oh, i hear okay. you you don't have to like him that high i do right but i'm i don't think alexander madison is the full-on answer there either so is he a, a, a stud running back like i like etn but they're either gonna throw the ball a whole lot or they're gonna give etn the ball right yeah I don't I don't personally like Jacksonville's offense that much that like Trevor Lawrence is a top three quarterback, Calvin Ridley is a top 10 quarterback or wide receiver, and ETN is a top eight running back. I don't see it. Everybody's high on Jacksonville. They're gonna be a stud offense, they're gonna be one of the best and you know, most improved team. Ridley's gonna bring them there. I don't see it. So my concern is ETN to me isn't a, a stud running back that I like that much. Alexander Madison, not a stud running back. I like that much. Kyle Pitts hasn't done crap yet. Yes, that team has to be better. But what is Kyle Pitts? What is Calvin Ridley? He hasn't played in a year and a half, and everybody's already deeming him as the number eight wide receiver in the league. Like, there are holes on this team in my eyes. Rashad White probably won't hold the starting role, and if he does, it's not a great starting role. David Montgomery, I don't. Andy's talking him up like he's putting up twenty-two touchdowns and eight hundred yards. Kenny Pickett, fine. Tanks Bigby, back up to to ETN, fine. But if ETN goes down, Tank Bigsby is going to be okay. He's not going to be a stud fill-in running back, I don't think. Gerald Everett, fine. Elijah Moore, fine. Like, yeah, he's got pieces that can start. Yes, he's got depth at, at running back. Oh, we lost him. The most well-rounded team in the league. Because I'm not high, I'm not high on his running backs. I'm not high on Ridley like everybody else is. So I think I that's think... I think that's fair, Ty. I think we the because I'm I'm not gonna argue any of your points. I think the reason that I can ignore those and still feel good about Charlie's team is because even personally not feeling great about any of his four running backs as like a stud he's got four and that's great and like it i like ridley but even if you don't like you don't have to start ridley every week if you can play white in the flex instead or montgomery or who you know whoever like i don't think elijah moore is anything gerald everett is a nice insurance piece if Pitts doesn't pop off but i think either way you're getting better than the two teams in the league who are starting a rookie tight end this year. So 
Like you're still beating a couple of teams, even if Pitts is the ass that he has been. And then add to that, like what the way that I see Charlie's team is almost like some of the early teams that Fryer would draft where it was just a bunch of like twenty, thirty dollar guys and no holes but no studs. But Charlie's team has fields and it has chase. And that makes a huge difference when you have all of the depth to where if Ridley doesn't hit, if Madison doesn't hit, which you don't you don't believe in Ridley, I don't believe in Madison, he's still gonna be fine even if those things are true. Because he has Montgomery, he has Rashad White, he has he has starters on his bench that even if these guys aren't great, you know, he might have to pay for it for a week or two, figuring it out. Like, oh shit, I started Madison and he's garbage. I started Ridley and he's garbage. And now we know after week two, but I think Jamar Chase, plus the fact that he has so much depth and not just like handcuffs and like guys the in my eyes, his depth are starters on a lot of teams in this league. And that's, sure. and that's I, a big deal. Right. And I don't disagree with that, but for me to say, I think he's got a couple more holes than Walker does and then get jumped on also seemed a little irrational when I didn't even have a chance to explain my disagreement with Charlie's team and how deep he is and how good he is. So Charlie's best. You're not allowed Charlie's to have best. other opinions than that. He's, he's putting up 13 wins this year. I mean, he had $230 going in the draft. It was hard to fuck it up. He didn't fuck it up. Let's just... <laughs> That's why his team looks so good because he had way more money. And he still doesn't have a star outside of Chase and Fields. Everybody else is okay. So, whatever. It is what it is. On that note, if uh, either of you want to give us uh, a quick draft overpay, underpay, how you guys feel about a certain situation, feel free. I know a couple of you guys, or at least Andy, you said you have a couple uh, notes. If you would like to run through those real quick, feel free. Yeah, um, I thought uh, that the best buy was uh, the Brees Hall for 27, Dalvin Cook for 8. I think locking in the Jets' backfield for $35 is is fantastic value, um, particularly Brees Hall for $27. Um, worst, I, I have I have Friar Booth at 11. I think that Pitts at 8 and uh Kittle, where he went, I don't remember, was like 14, maybe 17. Um, the fact that Friermuth got up into double digits with how low some of the non-Mark Andrews tight ends went this year, I thought was surprising and unnecessary. Um, so that was one of the the bigger ones. Waddle got caught as, as kind of the last big guy on the board, but 53 for Waddle when Diggs went for 52 and C.D. Lamb went for 46 was... Uh, extreme to me james connor for 27 was also well above where i had him on my board i like connor this year but i liked him for the 12 dollars i thought he was going to go for so um and then mark mark andrews for 34 dollars was kind of ridiculous but the worst uh the worst one was kenneth walker not being kept for seven dollars and then getting drafted for 44 that was the worst one and it's not 37 dollar probably that's insane yeah, but you've got Hawk on the bench for ten dollars, so you know so you gotta feel good. Put right? that two dollars in your pocket. <laughs> All right, boy, or anything? Those are my yep. notes. I got nothing. All right. Well, on that, I hope you guys enjoyed this two-hour podcast. Uh, tell us how you feel about our uh, analysis on any of this. Let us know if you have any questions, whatever. Otherwise, enjoy week one of football. We're out.